Those are the biggest index cards I've ever seen in my life. Those things are the size of my face. These are the draft ones they have. Oh my god, they're huge. With the 20th selection in the first oh round. Oh my god. You know, it's funny because I brought an index card too. But mine's just... Well, you know what they say. Genetics, Pee Wee. <laughs> I was gonna say, it's not the size of the ship, it's the motion of the ocean, but you can't get to England in a rowboat. <laughs> numbers I know they're ridiculous but I, he's a slot guy and know. you know what yeah, the thing about Adam Humphreys is when you look at him you're like oh he's got to be like 6'2 right he's he not he's like 5'11 yeah he plays really big um, it's funny because I went on to uh, spot track to sign try and see what his market value was spot track does all that where they compare all the market yeah. values of players and stuff they're they're estimating him getting a bigger contract than Golden Tate because he's 26. Well, yeah, he's young, right? They're saying he's going to go four for 41.7. I mean, that's just what? That's just comparable against other contracts. He's a candy. That's a lot of money for a slot receiver, though. It's a lot of money well, for a slot the, the way that the NFL is shaping up now, those guys are – they're huge because I – mean, we talked about it. I, honestly, Ski – I think this was a podcast when, during the podcast days. Mm -hmm. We talked about slot guys being paid uh, handsomely because if you have a slot guy, how many how many guys go uh, three deep as far as their corners can be right. concerned? Yeah, yeah. We talked about moving McKelvin to the slot long, long time. Wow. That's how long ago it was. Wow, yeah. And you're like, well, would you pay a slot guy this much? Well, if a slot guy is, is catching eighty balls a year, you have to. You need a slot guy to cover yeah. him. Yeah, we were talking about, would you pay a slot corner that much money? Yeah. Yeah. Because you're paying a slot receiver that McKelvin much. McKelvin would have been such a good slot oh, corner. Oh, God, yeah. Because, boy, he had no idea where that football was. He <laughs> was just, if he could keep it in front of him, he was so good. I think a few times he thought he was playing offense. <laughs> so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bills have already had a relationship established with them, right, going back to last year's draft. Mm -hmm. Tampa is a new head coach. Bruce Arians? Yeah. And they are open for business. They are in cap purgatory. Yes. They're not sure if they have a quarterback, yep. right? I have to imagine they're going to keep Winston, right? Because Arians, Arians left when Palmer left in Arizona because he didn't want to deal with a, a rookie quarterback again. So Arians left, right? Yeah. And probably thought Fitzgerald was going to retire just like the rest of the league did four years ago. But <laughs> he, still that's a, he still plays. But um, Tampa is open, open, open for business. So... Let's talk about who the Bills could snag. All right, I believe that there are, if, you, if you're not counting Winston, are there five other players? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Technically seven, because two of them were free agents. Okay, so they're not, they can't right, they technically can't pay them. Right, exactly. Um, so, um, one. It's we, interesting enough because they are in cap. You said cap purgatory. I think they're 8.4. 8 8 8.4 8 underneath the cap. But if they, if you include Winston, that's sick. They have six players that they could cut with zero, as far as I know, if I was doing the numbers right, there's zero dead cap. So I won't count against their cap. But they could save $75.5 million yeah. under the current cap. And honestly, cutting those players, there's three of them that in this draft, are you going to cut them? Oh, well. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Um, so, uh, JPP is one. He's making $14.9 million, 30 years old. I can't imagine Tampa holding on to him. No, I can't either. Yeah. With, with as putrid as the defense was this year, everybody's, you yeah. know, everybody's name is, or everybody is on the line for their jobs. Well, let's say the Bills offered JPP two for 14, seven, seven mil a year. Do you think that would be? They got Murphy. Yeah. Okay. I think they already made that decision last okay. year. So you're not thinking an exterior pass rusher. Again, you can get those in the draft this year. Like you this could. year this year is very, very draft heavy. Um okay. So they they save another fourteen, they're at twenty two now. Yep. Okay. Or fifteen basically. Okay. Um 
Gerald McCoy is at thirteen million dollars. You know He's been brought up by uh, by a lot of the people talking about interior defensive linemen mm -hmm. that the Bills should try to target. You know, he's 30, he's going to be 31 next year. I don't think he's going to garner a lot of money. Um, I, evidently, since you, st I mean, you paid Star Latulale last year because yeah. they have familiarity with him, which we've said, uh, a lot of people have also said, you know, I can't right. believe you gave Star 50. Yeah. The tra contract isn't worded as daunting as everyone thinks it is. Right. But uh, Gerald McCoy could be one of those guys that if you happen to miss out on a Jordan Phillips or negotiations don't go well, right. McCoy's a guy you could bring in and a plug-and-play guy next to Star Latulale. Yeah. Come on now. Well, yeah, and I think that's I think that's a good point to bring up mm -hmm. because when you start looking at the rotation, you have Star, you have Harrison Phillips, and, right, because the Bills love to rotate those down linemen. They have yes. to. Yes. So they need a stable of them. McCoy makes a lot of sense. I think McCoy's misplaced in a 4-3. I think as an outside in a 3-4, he'd be way more effective because he's, he's a big dude. He's not slow either. So no, no, no. I think he's kind of misplaced. If, I think teams that are in 3-4 systems are really going to target him. Um, he may. Being somebody that they can But I don't think they can offer him two things that the Bills could offer him. Number one, they could offer him whatever contract he would desire. That's one. Two is the fact that because yeah. the Bills play such a rotational defensive front, yeah. it's going to extend his career. Absolutely. And, and when you're able to 30, you got to really look at Exactly. It. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, Deshaun Jackson. Does Deshaun Jackson instantly make your team better? He's 32. He's missed a lot of time for the last two seasons. I don't know how much of a mentor the kid could be. And he is the type of deep threat that Arian loves. So that may be one that Arians takes on the chin to keep him in, in, in camp. Yeah. He loves those deep threat guys. We don't know what the, the status of the former Arizona players mm -hmm. that uh, might be free agents this year that may want to go join Arians. Like yeah. you said before on an earlier episode, if you go John from Brown, Arizona to Yeah, if John Miami. Brown doesn't, sound, doesn't sign in uh, yeah. down in Tampa, I'd be shocked. Like yeah. John Brown, is, I, I'd expect him to be down in But at 31, Deshaun Jackson... Is he worth $10 million? I don't know, man. He's missed a lot of time. That's the thing. Is, he has. Is he still a valuable asset to your team? I think he is, but I think he is at, at $5 million. I, I don't think he is at $10 million. I think McCoy would, would probably be a very valuable piece in the negotiation of that because they have played together. Yeah, that's and be true. And like, listen, this guy... He could he could teach our young wide receivers what to do. Well, and he plays outside. Yes. Right? He plays yep. the outside wide receiver yep. position, which is something the Bills are definitely going to look for. Sean Jackson, I think, is is in play for the Bills because not $10 hateful. million dollars is yeah, whatever. I'm not hateful. Or whatever. Yes. Right? Love Levante David. Um, he, so feels any, like he fills multiple needs for you. Yeah. you know, he's a depth signing and an outside linebacker. Who could be a starter? Plays in a Tampa, too. Um, and uh, plays in some special teams, which me and McDermott really Yeah, covered, they got to have. So. Right. Um, the one that I love, though, outside of all these guys, is Cameron Brake. Because he signed a contract extension coming off of O.J. Howard's rookie season. And everybody went, mm -hmm. what? what? You just signed Cameron Brake to this monster tight end deal. But you just drafted O.J. Howard? Um, I love Cameron Brake. Because if you look in the draft, right, to me, T.J. Hawkinson, who's the best tight end in the draft, in my opinion. I could be wrong. A lot of people love Noah Fant because he's... A super athletic guy. Both came from Iowa, right? But um, I love T.J. Hawkinson because he just does everything. Um, now, a tight end of his mold takes a little while to become successful in the NFL because he's not a speed guy. He's a big guy. He can run block. He can pass protect. Um, he find you know he can run routes. But a tight end like him has to learn the soft spots and zone coverage on the inside. And as a tight end coming into the NFL, the zone concepts are more complicated, so it's a little harder to find those soft spots and zone coverage. So he's not gonna TJ Hawkins is not gonna have an immediate impact on your team if you draft him. It's gonna take a couple years for him to learn those nuances of being and going against NFL defenses. However, Cameron Brait already knows that. Cameron Brait instantly makes your offense significantly better. So what you're saying is that if I get you correctly, if we had a veteran quarterback, you would want to take Hawkinson? Yeah. But since we have Josh Allen, you want to take Cameron Braid? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I, I, Absolutely. I, I, I take Cameron Braid at, what, he's 10 mil? Is that what? Seven. Oh, 7 mil? <laughs> yeah. I'd, well, yeah, the thing is, that the way that the, the contract was worded and the way I read it is the fact is on the fifth day of the new league year, which is the second week of March, um, he has he has like $18, $18 million, $18. $18 million guarantee against injury. They get okay. to automatically pay to him. Okay. All right, because a lot of his contract is just all base salary. 
Right. It hasn't been prorated over the rest of the contract because he hasn't reached the next year yet. Yeah. Um, well, his so contract is interesting because um, he, yeah, instead of a signing bonus, he wanted to guarantee against injury. Yeah. Which I think is kind of cool. It's, it's sort of a, an interesting wrinkle to his contract for the nerdy contract guys out there. Yeah. So as far as that goes, uh, I would not be hateful against Brady. If you, if you had, uh, if you had, let's say you had to. Uh, How high around a pick do you go to get Cameron Bray if you got to give Tampa a pick? Because they they really want to get cheaper. How Fourth. high do you go? Fourth? I mean, if you if you give them anything else, you're giving them a starter. Yeah, yeah I don't think you know. Yeah, you're not trading a starter for a starter, even though you're taking seven million dollars more. Right, that's what I mean. You're not going to trade starter for starter and then increase the dollar figure that it's going to cost you by six million dollars. And the Bills anything. have something they can offer the Tampa can that's a guaranteed salary, mm-hmm. and it doesn't have to be. Against injury, which right. be whatever it is. Exactly. So, uh, and the last one's Winston, which yeah, that's saves not, twenty yeah. million for them. So realistically, if they don't, if they decide to move on from Jameis Winston, they could they could be twenty eight million dollars under the cap, mm-hmm. and then start making some moves for these other guys if they want. Right. So we throw it to you, ha- uh, you know, subscribers of hashtag. Which one of those guys, aside from Winston, yeah. would you like to see in a Bills uniform next year? Yeah.